you want to learn new things while also having fun. Can I see your hands, please? Thank you. And how many of you want to learn about the elements of a stable financial portfolio? Can I see your hands, please? Thank you. You guys are in it for today because we are going to talk about the elements of a stable financial portfolio. Okay, so grab your pens, grab your pencils, and get a piece of paper because we will be drawing while learning and we will be having a lot of fun for today. So, let's begin. Hi, I'm Julian Pineda. I have been broke for half of my life, but I realized that life is so much more than just paying the bills. From being a working student to working multiple jobs for 16 hours a day, I did whatever it took, not just to survive, but to thrive. As a result, I was able to become financially free before I reached 30. My goal is to educate, inspire, and move people to be their best, and in my own way, contribute to nation building. For today, we are going to talk about the elements of a stable financial portfolio. But before we get there, let me share my screen first. Great. So I have a simple question. On your screens right now, you will see a bed. Of course, everybody loves the bed, right? It's comfortable. We like to sleep on it. And um, after a day's work, we just want to sit back, lie down, and enjoy, right? So my question here is, if this bed, imagine this. If this bed only has one leg, will you sit on it or lie down in it? No. No. Thank you. How about if it has two legs? Will you lie down in it? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Why do you think no? Probably because it is unstable, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. If it has three legs, will you also lie down on it or probably still no? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. But yeah, it's no confidence in that answer, right? But picture this. What if this bed now has four legs? Now, will you sleep in it? Yes. Yes. Now, why did I ask that question? It's because this bed, in my opinion, this depicts the stableness of having a financial portfolio. And I share this in my book, Nasdo. I mentioned there in one of the chapters that this bed represents our financial portfolio. And each leg has a component. Let me get to that. So you can see right now, the first leg, this is what I call the savings leg. Okay, the savings leg. So what does the savings leg mean? For me, this means this is our emergency fund. Okay, so right now you can put a drawing. By the way, this is this is a original creation from our team. Okay, so that's good. So talking about the savings, it acts like our emergency fund. Meaning, if something would happen, we will be getting something. Okay, it's not like, oh no, I lost a job or, or my business is not doing well. Where will I get the money? How will I pay for my rent? How will I pay for, for the house, the cars, and everything else? So the purpose of savings is for that. It's for emergency only. And in my suggestion, it differs from people to people in circumstances. My suggestion is that you can put something around three to six months worth of expenses. Okay, three to six months worth of expenses. And what does that mean? It means, okay, well, why three to six months first? Three to six months because if something would happen to us, we're not, it's not like our world will just crush and crumble and we're like, oh no, it's the end of the world. Where will I get money? Okay, it's not gonna happen if you have an adequate emergency fund. Now, some experts would say, keep it up to one year, especially if you have a kid, if you have family, it's basically up to you. 
it's it's it depends on your threshold on your comfortable level but for me honestly speaking i would stick to three months and why is that because remember there's also a part wherein the habit is important and if something drastic happens to us and we cannot create something or we cannot get out of it after three to six months then it will really take a toll on us our aura our demeanor our our confidence level will really deep dive and then it will really shrink so that's why in my opinion we need to be able to do something within the first three months it's comfortable so that our world doesn't just crush and crumble and it's not that too comfortable for us to just relax okay it's a it's a good level in my opinion and based on my computation okay so that's the first one it's called savings now the second leg of this bed is what i call the protection leg there and what does protection mean simply put protection for me means having life insurance and health insurance now some of you when i said the word insurance you're like oh no he's gonna talk about insurance i don't like that it's only when you die or something or it's it's i don't like talking about it it feels so sad right i get you i'm also a young guy and i also don't like to talk about these things but sooner or later we need to because it is a fact of life regardless of our status or gender or preference or or inclination in life one way or another this will really happen to us and if we do not really as a famous quote would say it if we don't really plan we actually plan to fail that is the reason why we need to talk about this okay so there are four legs of this bed just hang on for a moment and stick with me on this one and i'll, I'll do my best to really make sense to you okay now since we're talking about insurance so the first one is health insurance obviously i think that's a very obvious answer we need to protect our health and most organizations offer health insurance you have the cards you have um you have some are deducted from your salaries to come up with a health fund so that's good okay and um other corporations also give that as well so we're fine with that one the second part of the protection is again as i've mentioned life insurance and people don't want to talk about this based on statistics only about 10% of the population are insured so that's pretty mm, that's pretty not so good right so i want to talk about more of this there's a wide area of explanation and i can go through this in deeper detail as a matter of fact I might as well just come up with a new video talking about insurance as a whole, okay? So just in passing, why do we need this? Think of this for an ex for example. Let's say we have our phones, right? Does our phones have some kind of protection in it? I mean, does it have like a screen protector or a case or a cover or a or something that protects it? How about your cars? Do you ever go out anywhere, even just in a grocery? Do you go out anywhere without a spare tire? Would you go out without a spare tire? No. No. Thank you. Now, if you are, let's say, in your houses, do you ever have a time wherein you don't put a lock, or a padlock, or 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 a deadbolt or anything to that effect you don't have a gate you don't have a fence you don't have um you don't have locks in your home do you guys do that yes yes i mean or no no, no. okay so every house has a padlock every house has its has its security measure and why is that it's because it's for your protection right so think about this. If we protect the basic things in our lives, like our phones, our cars, our houses, even our gadgets, if we protect them with insurance, how about, and why, why do you think we 
are not protecting our most important asset. And our most important asset is ourselves. When one of my, in one of my um, talks and speaking engagements, I asked that question. I asked, what is our most important asset? And people kept shouting, I have a car. I was able to buy a house. Some went to the extreme, like I have jewelries and paintings. I was like, okay, that's, that's interesting. That's fascinating. But these are not your most important asset because your most important asset is yourself. Remember that you are getting paid based on the value that you provide. Your house, your cars, your jewelry, your paintings cannot replace you. But once they, these things are gone in our lives, yes, it may be sad, but you can always replace them. That is the reason why you are your most important asset. And that is the reason why you need, of all things, you need to protect yourself. And the only way, and one of the ways, I mean, to protect yourself is to have a health insurance and a life insurance. Okay? So, I told you it was good. I, I'm going to do my best to make sense to you. And now, let's move on to our third leg of our bed. Now, this third leg is, some of you would like this. This is what I call, can you read it? Yes. Okay, thank you. This is what I call short-term instruments. short-term instruments. And what are these short-term instruments? Basically speaking, these are your investments for the short-term. And when I mean short-term, I mean one to three years. Okay, so think about it. What are the goals or dreams that you set that you want to be, that you want to accomplish in the next three years? Probably if you are my age, probably you want to get married. Or or if you are a little ahead of me, probably you're thinking about having um, a separate fund for your child. By this time, probably you have a child or two. Or probably you want to have your own house. Probably as of the moment, you're renting or probably you're in a condo and you want to buy a house, right? Or probably not so big of a purchase, you're just looking to upgrade your car. So these are goals which can be easily easily accomplished within the next one to three years and this particular leg is for that it's for the short term that's why i call it the short-term instruments okay now lastly lastly this is everyone's favorite <laughs> because everyone's favorite because it it helps a lot of people of course and um, it's famous it's prominent everyone talks about it and these are what we call there you go somebody said it already these are what we call the investments okay so this investments <coughs> excuse me wait a minute just don't forget to hydrate Thank you. By the way, hydrating is very important. It keeps our um, it keeps our bodies healthy and our minds are active. So always hydrate in everything that you do. Okay, since we're talking about investments, people love these investments. And why do we need to have an investment? By the way, for me, it's simple. Investment is not just about hoarding money. Okay, people are thinking, investments, I don't want to invest. I want to spend. I want to buy this. I want to buy that. And you guys are right. Spending is good thing. Okay, and we really need to spend regardless if these are material possessions or, or things that we really need in life like education or traveling or, or retirement or buying the necessities. All of this are also spending. And in my opinion, investment is as simple as growing your money today 
so that you will have something to spend on in the future. It's that simple. That's it. That is what investments are for me. Plain and simple on how to describe it. Okay? So, don't ever think about investments just like hoarding and getting more money. No, it's not. Because at the end of the day, we need to spend it. We don't... The money, okay, we cannot eat money. We cannot sleep on money. We cannot drive money. We cannot... You, you cannot wear money. Okay? So, money is just a tool. Money is just a byproduct. So again, investments are important because this is just things that we accumulate right now so that we will have something more to spend in the future. Okay? Good. Any questions so far? None? Great. All of the things that I've mentioned earlier, this forms part of the elements of a stable financial portfolio. Now we'll have a quick recap. Okay? So again, as a quick recap, savings are for the emergencies. We could put something anywhere between three to six months worth of whatever it is that we are having, right? And the next one is the protection. It is a combination of life insurance and health insurance. Anyway, short-term instruments are what I call the play fund. It means anything that we want to spend on in the next three years, one to three years, like what I've mentioned earlier, buying a condo, a car, getting married, or since we all miss traveling, maybe you can also put it as part of your traveling fund. And lastly is the investment or the golden goose. These are usually long term. When I say long term, 10 years, okay, and above, people are like, okay, I want something long term. I want it in four years. My friends, it's not long term. That's just mid term or middle term you want something when i say really 10 years it's more than 10 years right that's why we prepare for our kids education before the, i mean their college funds before what they're, they're they're at the age of five or six we're already preparing for the college fund if you want to retire you're not gonna if you want to retire at 65 or 60 you don't want to be planning for these things when you're in your late 50s of course you want to be planning when you're in your 50s right in your early 50s rather so these are the long-term goals and what i want you to do for tonight is to really think about it if the bed is a depiction of our financial personal uh portfolio where or which leg are you really strongest and which leg are you weakest? You might be thinking, Julian, I have so many savings. Good, but do you have investments or it's just really savings? And you're like, what the hell is the difference? I just told you. <laughs> if it's just one leg, two legs or three legs, you're a little bit shaky. Your, your portfolio is not solid. Okay, same thing. If there are people who are just really gung ho or really solid when it comes to investing, but you don't value insurance, my friend, again, you are your most important asset. So before you sleep tonight, think about this. In these four areas, in these four legs, where are you strongest and where are you weakest? Or are you even balanced? If you are balanced, congratulations, you're doing a good job, keep it up. If you're not balanced, maybe it's time to consider making or putting aspects or considering all the aspects of this bed. Now, moving forward, you might be thinking, okay, so Julian, I'm now ready to proceed. So what's the next step? Where do I put my money? Of course, you might be thinking that one. Easiest answers. Okay, I'll just run through this really quickly. For the savings, it's, it's very, very easy. You can open a regular savings account in your bank of choice. Okay, so since savings is for emergencies, you want something that is easily accessible to you. Something that you can get easily. Like proximity-wise, convenience-wise, that's important. But don't make it 
so convenient because the tendency is you will be getting money from that savings account even if it's not for savings even rather even if it's not for emergency okay so make it a little bit harder but also convenient so that when you need it you can get it some people want to put savings in their houses in their piggy banks or or just at home it's also good but there are um, there's risk in that as well because of course like pests and termites um, might eat it up or or theft you know so it's it's i suggest just open a regular savings account in a bank okay the next one of course is the protection and i would suggest that you get a policy from an insurance company okay i'm really hinting on you in this one it's called a policy and it is from an insurance company i know some of you might be raising your eyebrows and you're like oh it's a scam like my my friend my parents my uncle my auntie my whoever at least somebody you know invested in in a company in an organization before and um, they didn't make money or they lost the money so i don't want to badmouth anything or any organization so i'm giving you a hint already it is a policy from an insurance company and of course again as i mentioned this is probably a sensitive topic and um as requested by a lot of people i can also come up with with another event or another video specifically talking about this one okay so stay tuned for that one now moving forward we also have the short-term instrument and where do i invest my short-term instruments for me it's simple i can choose anywhere between a corporate note or a treasury bill to one of the things that are a little bit controversial as of the moment but in the short term i think it's um, um i believe it's something that we it's a good thing that we need to put money on it's um it's in cryptocurrencies and of course the forex market we don't really invest in this much but it's good in the short term and of course lastly is our investment or our long-term investment if you may and where do i put my money of course in blue chip stocks or corporate bonds corporate bonds these are instruments that give you fixed and guaranteed returns regardless of what's happening in the economy or in the market it's not that volatile so your money is safe and you earn passive income from it blue chip stocks if you're looking for growth and um, and massive uh, growth of your funds, probably it's not the best choice. But again, it is good because it is for the long term. If it's short term, you may not get that much attention. You may not get that much returns. But in the long term, you will because you are putting your money in established companies. Okay. Now, even if it's not blue chips. If we're talking about long-term investments, stocks is also a very good way to, to invest in, okay? So, for today, we talked about the elements of a stable financial portfolio and we used the bed as an analogy for that one. Now, do you have any questions or do you want to expound on a particular leg or a particular topic? Now, comment below so that we can talk about it and I can explain it further. Or maybe, just maybe, like the insurance topic, we can come up with a separate video specifically to answer your most hard-pressed questions. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you and just comment below.